Hey, I'm Jessica Barton. And I'm Holly Winnard. And you're watching RC Racing TV from the 2010 Snowbird Nationals. Well, this month on RC Racing TV is a monster of a show, but as you can hear, my voice is going, and Matt, <coughs> what's on? <coughs> Over in Florida, we have the Snowbirds 13.5 World GT Final. Plus, we'll take a look at HPI Sprint 2 Flux. But first, we're in Denmark at the DHI 2010 for all the action in the modified A Finals. Nick, have you thought about seeing a doctor? No? Uh, fair enough. What an achievement for Krista Anderson on pole position with the Associated. Qualifies ahead of the runner-up being Ronald Volker in the World Championship and Mark Reinhardt, who won the World Championship, down in third position. Timo Lino on the X-ray in fourth position. Steen Graveson with the Tamiya in fifth. Yannick Primper, another Tamiya in sixth position. Then it's Alexander Hagberg, the Swede, with an X-ray. Moving back through the field, Freddy Sudhoff, another Swede. Mark Fischer, the German with the white car. And behind him, it's Martin Hoodie on the X-ray. Stand by for action then. As will the pressure tell on the youngster. Anderson gets away very nicely indeed. Volker, Reinhardt, Lino, as you were from the start of the race. Anderson then with the Associated pulling away from Volker in second who has Reinhardt sitting in his wheel tracks. This is good stuff from the youngster. He's set a cracking pace and if anything he's pulling away. Closing stages of the race now and the battle is for fourth position. That's Prumper being pressed by Timo Linu in fifth ahead of them. Reinhardt Volker and Anderson, who's being... Oh, no, Anderson's in second! Anderson is in second! What has happened? I was just about to say the youngster has been very, very impressive, but a mistake out of my sight has meant that Ronald Volker has gone through into the lead and they've been closed down on by Reinhardt. Top three together now, then a short gap, and then fourth and fifth close together with Prumba and Linu. Scrapping it out for the minor positions. This is the battle for the podium, though. One, two, and three. Reinhardt looking the man most likely. Anderson having given away what was a comfortable lead makes another mistake there. Can the German get through? Good up it And Lino's come through into fourth position there. Prump has disappeared. Dropped down the field. Had a problem in the infield. Top three coming through. Volker has stolen this away from the youngster. The 18-year-old buckling under the pressure. Can he hang on to second place? He's got Reinhardt, the world champion, right up his wheel tracks. Tremendous stuff. If these three were any closer together, they'd be on the same frequency. A little touch there by Reinhardt onto second place man, Anderson, who's started from Paul and gets taken out right on the line. But the timing is telling me that Volkers won it. Tight for second, and coming through it, Anderson, who's been confirmed in second place there. Reinhardt in third, Martin Hoody with a great last couple of laps, goes by Lidu for fourth and fifth. Then it's Graveson, Hagberg, Sudhoff, Yannick Prumper having problems near the end, and Mark Fisher, well, out of sorts today in tenth. You've got to wonder what is going through Krista Anderson's mind, throwing away that race. Literally in the last 90 seconds, he gets a good start in the second final and leads away from Volker. Reinhardt in third position. It's not Reinhardt! It's not Reinhardt! Timo Lino already up into third position, passes the German world champion. Now, where did that happen? Well, this is the first lap coming down to corner number three. Look in the background, there is Lino going down the inside, just not just Reinhardt, and takes third place. Back to the leaders now. And it is still... Krista Anderson, who leads from Volker. Lenu just settling down now in third place. Reinhardt, at the moment, not got anything for the top three, but you don't write Mark off, do you? 
He's looking quite sinister, just lurking there outside of the podium positions. Anderson looking confident, but we've seen this before. Linu not being able to close down on Volker and the young Swede at the head of the field, but it's it's all pretty equidistant there. This is quite unusual. You just wonder what's going through the drivers' minds here, whether they're planning for later on in the race, looking for any chink in the armour of their competitors. We'll say one thing for the leader. He is showing a fantastic turn of speed and very good lines indeed. And it was only that mistake that he made late on in the race that gave Volker a chance in the first final. And now Volker has decided to up the tempo a little bit. Look, he's close down to the leader. He's hit him. He's hit the leader. Volker is the one that loses out as Lenu comes through into second position. Anderson somehow managing to roll onto his wheels and get away very quickly indeed. So it is still Anderson leading, but this time it is Timo Lenu behind him. And in third position is Volker, still ahead of Reinhardt, who wasn't able to... Not Reinhardt in fourth place, my apologies. That, in fact, is Steen Gravison, isn't it? In ta on the Tamiya in fourth position. So not a great race for the world champion. Mark Reinhardt just gradually being shunted down the field. And now at the head of the field, second place man, Timo Lino, coming under a little bit more pressure, makes a mistake. And there, Volker takes the chance. My goodness me, the door barely opened, but he got his nose down and regains second position with Gravison there in fourth, now beginning to smell blood in a potential podium spot too, as Timo Lino makes an uncharacteristic error and gives away second position. Now, all of that is very good news for Krista Anderson, who's pulled away a little bit for these three cars, from these three cars, battling for the rest of the podium. What can... Ronald Volker do. He's seen this young man already be very consistent, but pressure may yet tell. Did give up the lead in the last final, remember. Has he learned from that, the young Swede? Top five, absolutely as one, aren't they, as they're going through. Top six, in fact. Any small mistake now is going to be very, very costly indeed. Anderson... Is he getting a little conservative in his lines? He's certainly backing up slightly towards Ronald Volker, who is beginning again to apply the pressure, and Timo Lino stepping up the pace as well. The top three now pulling away from the rest of the field. And this is coming down to the money laps now. And second place, Volker goes over. I said he was just trying a little bit harder, and he's tried a little too hard. We've mentioned this before, but those inside curbs, very unforgiving and tips the car onto its roof. Now, he's quite lucky there that he's only lost one position. He's got again. Volker again with a problem, and that will cost him even more dearly as he'll drop away from the podium finish that he so badly needs. Volker, the winner of the first final. Anderson now leads it, still from Lino in second position. Now, can Timo close down on the young man ahead? Is there still drama left in this second final? Coming through towards the end of the race. There's a long, long gap back to third place. And that, I th think, is Hagberg. Is it all the way back there? We'll check that on the timing and scoring as they come through next time around. But the battle is still on at the head of the field. Let's not take our eyes off this for too long. Got to close this one out has young Krista Anderson. He's been here before, and at this point on the racetrack, he blew it in the first final. Timo Lino knows that. They're into the closing stages now. Lino trying hard as they come through. Lino's not close enough at the moment, unless the leader does make a mistake, but now the pressure is being applied. Lino makes a mistake. Oh, you could see how much he was trying there. The front end of the car just washing out in the technical infield, and that may be enough, I think, to give Krista Anderson... The gap that he needs, yes it is, he wins it. Confirmation of the second final then with Anderson from Lenu. Mark Reinhardt having a much better second half of the race, got himself back up in to third ahead of Fischer, Volker, Gravison. Alexander Hagberg, well I promoted up, but in fact he was a lap down in seventh position. Anderson then on pole position. He has the slight advantage because although Volker has a win, 
he's got a win and a second. Volker a win and a fifth. As they come. Oh, and that is Reinhard being taken out by Linu, I think, that, And that's caused all kinds of carnage further down the field. Everybody just about getting through that as the leaders battle on. I'll stay with them for a moment as Ronald Volker in second place knows what he's got to do. Second is not good enough. Why, do you ask, is second not good enough? Because the man ahead of him has a first and a second. And there goes Volker, who's made a big mistake there. Well, Anderson's got the pole position, of course, and on count back, it's qualifying that counts rather than the third result. So Volker knows what he's got to do. Only a win good enough, and he started off rather badly. Held on to second place, barely, from Gravison, who's fought his way up from fifth position on the grid after that first corner melee. So, Anderson, Gravison, uh, Anderson, Volker and Gravison, rather, the top three, as they move out into the middle portion of the race. Now, the reason we're watching the white, red and blue machine in second position is because if Ronald Volker on the Yukomo is going to win this championship, he has to get his head down and chased down the young Swede, who has been pretty impressive. Really should have had two first places under his belt already, and this one would have been wrapped up. But made a mistake in the first final, which was eventually won by Ronald Volker. Hagberg and Prumper fighting further down the field. And that is another tight battle. <laughs> Very tight indeed. There was really no need for that. And as you can see, the driver who committed the error falls back behind so as not to get a penalty. If only life in full-size racing was as courteous as it is here on the carpet. There's your leader. Krista Anderson then in that very distinctive colour scheme. Ooh, looked a little bit circumspect there in the middle. Now, has he got controller problems or is he just losing his concentration? We mentioned that that was a problem for the young man earlier. Now, there is Ronald Volker in second place. Just got a quick shot of him now. So let's keep our eyes on this. Yeah, the lines are going away a little bit. So either the tyres are going off or maybe, as I say, the concentration clips the inside kerb there. That's very dangerous indeed with these raised saucer kerbs. The upturned dishes, they are really, really heavy on the cars and you can't afford to be taking very much kerb at all. In fact, the better drivers try to stay off them. Now, this looks a little better from the leader, but to my relatively untrained eye, I think he's lost a bit of pace, and there is the answer. Volker beginning to close down on Anderson at the head of the field. Now, Ronald Volker, second in the World Championships, of course, is a man with a huge amount of experience, and at the moment, I think he's finding a little encouragement from the pace of the leader. I've got to say that Volker looks the better car at the moment. Closing down on the leader. And that looks neat and tidy enough. But the body language of the car, it's just not moving around. He's not leaning on that, is he? Whereas if we get a quick shot of Volker, there you see him punching out of the corners. And really leaving his... Bring it in. There is the mistake! There is the mistake! Anderson drops down into second position. And he only just holds onto that as Gravison is challenging for second place on the podium. Here's where it all went wrong for the leader. He's already in trouble there, isn't he? Look, he pulls it back too early, gets one bounce, and here, well, we've talked about those curbs before. There's no coming back. There's Volker going through, and Anderson has lost the lead. So there is Volker then leading it out, and look at the gap between himself and the second place driver, Krista Anderson. Well, what must be going through that young man's mind. He's had this wrapped up, not once, not twice, but three times. And he has managed to conspire against himself to give two victories to Ronald Volker. Now, can he hang on to a second position? He will have the three better results as it stands at the moment. A first and two seconds against two firsts and a fifth. If you were doing it on points, of course, that would be good enough, but the best two results only counting, and Ronald Volker in the best position at the moment. Now, surely 
Volker, with all of his experience, will not give it up from here. Looks like he's eased his pace a little bit, doesn't he? He's not pushing as hard as we saw him earlier on. Just a little bit of push coming out of there. The front tyres not had, having the bite as they had earlier on. But Volker's done this. Volker has played an absolute blinder. And he comes through. He'll take it. Whether it was given to him or whether he won it, he'll take it. And he seems a happy man on the podium. Taking the congratulations. Confirmation of the overall result there. Krista Anderson, well... I'm afraid it was a story of what might have been for him. Really had it in his own hands and gave it away. Reinhardt finishes in third. Martin Hoody, with a start pace place of 10th, finishes in fourth overall. But the day belongs to Ronald Volker. Now let's return to one of our favourite classes. It's the World GT Final from the Snowbirds 2010 in Florida. On pole position, very well known to us, Hoopo Honegel. Behind him is Brian Wynn, a CRC, two CRCs at the front of the field. Then Mike Blackstop, on the first of the Associateds. Joe Trandell in fourth position, another Associated. Fifth is Walter Henderson. Nice paint job there, Walter. Well done. In sixth position, Michael Abrera. Seventh, big good racing name here for Brian Bourdain on the CRC. Eighth, Randy Gross. We should be able to spot that one, shouldn't we? Ninth, Dave Ehrlich. Another silver and yellow CRC. And at the back, Bob Stelflo on the Associated. That's how they line up. Who bought Honigal then with the pressure of being on pole position? And Blackstock makes an absolute flyer into second, gives it up for a moment, but then retakes second place from uh, Brian Wynn, who settles down into third there. Behind them, I think that's uh, Trandell who's in fourth position, but a point in going on. And Trandell's gone through into third. Trandell into third position, but it's Honigal leading from. Blackstock in second position, Mike Blackstock, who has a look down the inside and fails, and that's cost him some time. So that's allowed Honigal to get away. Honigal and Blackstock, uh, two well-known names if you watch RC Racing a lot, and Blackstock stock just making the first mistake there. With Trandell in third position, getting a little bit ragged as he tries to close down on Blackstock in second. Then in third position, it's Bri uh, fourth position rather, it's Brian Wynn in the green and pink machine. Two-wheel drive cars, these have really caught on very quickly. Yes, oh, there's a mistake there. A mistake there by Joe Trandell, who has dropped out of third position. That's handed it back to Brian Wynn. Just making the point about the two-wheel drive machines, they do take a little bit of getting used to. A little more tail happy or loose, as the Americans would say to get them set up because without the extra pull from those front wheels it can be a little bit difficult just to get the set up I want them too twitchy I want them to kind of rotate around the front wheels but uh, not as I say too loose that you can't hold on to them particularly under braking mistake further back down the field there the white and orange car going through was Bob Stelflew who started off in 10th and is working his way through the field and he's had a decent opening point 
opening part to the race here. So they go through the twisties. Yellow with the uh, white is Walter Henderson, just ahead of him there. And as again, they come through this very technical centre portion. And again, if you watch our racing a lot, you'll notice the difference between how the track is delineated. Hard, solid barriers here, right the way around the corners, including the kerbs, or should I say without any kerbs, right to the apex of the corner, whereas in Europe, the favoured method of marking out the track has the barriers with the upturned sources, if you like, which seem to cause so many problems. Very difficult to keep the car under control. Here, no margin of error at all. Slight mistake and you'll clip the wall. Back to the leaders then. Honigal still with Blackstock trying to close him down. And Mike Blackstock recovering from that earlier attempt at overtaking in the first of the hairpins. You might also notice, if you're a regular watcher, that uh, this is a mostly left-hand circuit. Not always the case. As they come down onto the back straight again, and there's a bit of lappery going on. The Dave Ehrlich car going a lap down and some nice heads up driving by some of the now midfield drivers. I won't call them back markers as the leaders come through. Hooper Honigal then leading from Mike Blackstock. The CRC ahead of the Associated as more traffic is being negotiated. And it's a tribute to how quick these drivers are that they are lapping through the field. Pretty much half the field already a lap down. As we move into the closing stages here, and the battle is joined again for the lead. Blackstock, and that's where he likes it, just in that braking area, to that left-hand hairpin off the long run down the back straight. And Blackstock has absolutely timed this perfectly. Honigal's going to have to have his wits about him now, and there's more traffic as well. Little mistake by Blackstock, takes the edge off it. And that'll give Honigal at the head of the field just a little bit of room to settle back into his groove and not have to defend just at the moment. I think that's Bob Stelflew who is the next car to go a lap back if they get close to him. Stelflew will have to have his wits about him in that fluorescent orange tailed car. There he is. Oh, and a mistake by Honigal has let Blackstock right into it. He tries around the outside, ducks back to the inside. He loves it here. He goes through, takes the lead. Can he hang on to it? Yes, he does. Marvellous piece of driving by Blackstock. He saw the opportunity and took it decisively, paying it off in his favourite spot on the circuit. And Blackstock has made the move when it counts. Not much time left as Honigal goes side by side. Little bit of paint traded there. But that was crossing the end, the line at the end of the race. So the decisive moment, a couple of laps before. And, oh, now this is going to be interesting because Honigal has been given the win. Honigal has been given the win by a fraction of a second. We'll get the results in a moment. But first of all, Let's have a look at the decisive moment of the race. Here is where the lead goes. Honigal makes a mistake. Blackstock sets him up, and this is his favourite part of the circuit. Super quick through this left-hander, and that is a very decisive move indeed. Just a little block check, and there is the lead for Blackstock. Now, coming to the line, a little bit of a touch. Now, I think that's the line there, and for me, Blackstock may just be half a bumpers with the head because it's not till about here till Honigal gets back in the lead. It's all going to depend where the transponder is. So here is the confirmation. Hoopo Honigal by the smallest measurable margin. 503.53 to 503.54. One one hundredth of a second. Mike Blackstock, I think, and count himself a little bit unlucky. Brian Wynn in third position from Abrera and Trandell and everybody else at least a lap back. Well, that show went swimmingly, and next month we're going to Finland. Yes, Helsinki for the European Indoor Touring Car Championship. We've got more European action from uh, Hinkley, plus all the news, views, and interviews make RC Racing by far the greatest TV show in the world.